grand award winner this year is the Lewandowski Memorial Hackensack River Bridge in Secaucus, New Jersey. This six lane bridge carries over 110,000 vehicles per day on Interstate I-95 traffic over the Hackensack River. This high profile project was awarded by the authority in the summer of 2011. It was the largest single construction contract awarded in authority history. As a first for the agency, this project successfully addressed the combined needs of a full width bridge deck reconstruction, including the center median and parapets, structural steel repairs, seismic retrofitting, and bridge painting. This $143 million reconstruction project required over 20,000 cubic yards of concrete for the high performance concrete deck. We see construction well underway. It required over 20,000 cubic yards of concrete for the high performance concrete bridge deck, medium barrier, and parapets. 1,000 cubic yards for at grade medium barrier, and 325 cubic yards for precast concrete pedestals. Concrete was an obvious material choice during the selection for the replacement deck, median barrier, and parapets. This material provides flexibility through the unique S-curve roadway geometrics of the bridge. Construction went around the deck. We see that here. A large structure such as this, the material choice for the deck system is not always evident. An extensive alternative analysis was performed during design looking at both concrete and steel hybrid deck options. Superstructure geometrics was one of nine criteria evaluated. High performance concrete was the mixed design of choice for the bridge deck due to its long-term service performance under static, dynamic, and fatigue loading. HPC provides higher resistance to the effects of freeze-thaw conditions and chemical attack, and there is significant improvement to long-term durability and crack propagation over traditional mixes. In addition, HPC precludes the need for a wearing surface, which reduces the project's life cycle costs. A high-performance concrete mix was selected due to its low permeability and high resistance to chloride infiltration. In addition to the deck, concrete was chosen as part of the seismic retrofit work. To meet the turnpike seismic performance criteria, the existing steel rocker bearings were replaced with seismic isolation bearings. The difference in height between the existing and the new bearings was as much as 27 inches, which required six unique bolster types of varying heights at 288 locations. The field inspectors consistently communicated on-site ambient temperatures, Concrete temperatures, precise travel time and wait periods, and slump and air content of the concrete to the batch plant operators. Minor adjustments in air entrainment, super plasticizer dosage were made to optimize the mix at the time of placement. All adjustments were closely monitored by the quality control staff to verify compliance with the project design specification. The plans and specifications included numerous requirements which addressed the final ride quality. I'll mention two of them. First, the designer included in the plans an additional sacrificial quarter-inch thickness of concrete deck for removal by diamond grinding to achieve the final deck design elevation. However, a deck surface that changes continually in every direction on an S-shape alignment with super elevations presented a few challenges. The bridge follows an S-curve alignment requiring the deck cross section to vary from normal crown through two super elevation trans and transitions and back to a normal crown. The roadway geometric complexity, along with the very restrictive hours of construction access, was a major compelling reason that cast in place concrete was selected. From a lessons learned perspective, the best preparation for such a situation is adherence to tight survey controls for the deck construction and the concrete placement, which the contractor did accomplish. Second, ride quality test requirements were included in the supplementary specifications. The final acceptance criteria could be briefly summarized as the profile index, or PI value, for each lane could not exceed 15 inches per mile. The lane PI value being the average between the left and the right wheel path PI values. This criteria was met, and the riding surface of the bridge is smooth, but here too, there were challenges. Ride quality was emphasized throughout design and construction of the concrete superstructure. In order to achieve an enhanced riding surface, the concrete deck was placed with one quarter inch additional thickness, and subsequently micro-mill to the final design elevation. High quality specs vary from state to state, agency to agency. 
Historically, these specs were developed for roadways, not elevated bridge structures with complex geometries and many bridge joints. To apply the specs to our structure, an exclusion zone was created on either side of each bridge joint so that the readings in this zone would not distort the average PI value for each wheel path. So all lane information was collected. Then the readings in each exclusion zone were omitted after the test and the results recalculated. The final ride quality was further enhanced by the authority's decision to perform saw cut grooving in the longitudinal direction for increased wet weather friction and reduced noise levels. This innovative approach contributed to the overall success of the project. The final finishing operations are seen now. Precast concrete pedestals were used as part of the seismic upgrade at 148 locations to accommodate the lower profile seismic isolation bearings. With pedestals as high as 27 inches, precast concrete was found to be easier to detail and more economical to manufacture than steel, especially considering the wide range of heights and sizes required. Precast concrete was chosen as the most adaptive material. Precast concrete provided an additional advantage as bearing replacement work was performed under live traffic and the bolsters could be installed and grouted in place quickly. Utilizing a concrete deck system rather than steel provided numerous advantages to the client. The live load carrying capacity of the bridge was substantially increased as the concrete deck was made composite with a supporting steel superstructure. The increased capacity allows for the bridge to safely support the significant loading of heavy traffic. Achieving similar load capacities with structural steel retrofitting was cost prohibitive. One of the major challenges of this project was the staging of the concrete pours. We needed to utilize lane and roadway closings at night for the pours so that the trucks and equipment had access and were safe without a live traffic. Potential inclement weather, major events at venues such as the Meadowland Sports Complex and Yankee Stadium, and coordination with other regional contracts could all affect lane closures coordination on this project was truly extraordinary. First thing that we had to do was make sure that these night pours were done safely for both the traveling public as well as the men and women working on the project. The second was delivering almost 20,000 cubic yards of concrete during off hours to accommodate the patrons of the New Jersey Turnpike and ease traffic concerns when undertaking such a large task. $150 million worth of work was substantially completed through three major construction stages in two and a half years while maintaining all six lanes of traffic. There was a requirement in the supplemental specs to complete pouring all concrete three hours prior to opening any adjacent lanes to the concrete pour. Based off of our previous experience, we're working with the turnpike, we actively saw the alternatives to reduce the number of lane closures needed to pour the deck to accelerate the project schedule. Pre-pour meetings between Conti and Eastern were critical to the success of the project. And without the efforts of all of our respective field people, we would not have been able to execute. Conti worked with the Turnpike Authority and the designer to restage the project by using a half section barrier system 18 inches wide as a substitute for full face barriers 24 inches wide to enable more flexible staging. The decrease in stages had numerous benefits. Reduction in overall stages from five to four and overall schedule reduction of seven months. Overall reduction of nightly lane closings, which benefits the traveling public. Less stage lines on the concrete deck, which is the weak point of any concrete deck. The Turnpike Authority was open to this alternative, provided the proposed barriers met federal highway specifications. What I liked most about the project was the team effort and the team spirit. The coordination on this project was truly extraordinary. First thing that we had to do was make sure that these night pours were done safely for both the traveling public as well as the men and women working on the project. Our labor crew did a really great job of pouring this deck quality really shows on how it rides and just a great job all around by everyone. We'd have meetings and we'd find workarounds for all the conflicts so we could keep the work going and there wouldn't be any delays uh, for the project and I much appreciated that. So even, even the technical issues, we'd get the designer in and we'd figure a workaround on something that wasn't anticipated. So I very much like the team effort on this project. I nominated the project uh, because it was a very unique project. Uh, there were a lot of moving parts, and uh, it was an absolute pleasure to work with Conti um, because of how professional their guys were, and it made our job somewhat easy, even though there were that many moving parts. Here is the bridge in use. 
high performance concrete in place provides long-term service life for New Jersey traffic.